Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you. Welcome back to the channel and welcome today to Monaco. It is top marks. I've driven down here just now with my Porsche GT3. Some news to come though about the AMG GTR. It's a little bit sorry for itself, but we'll get to that. We're going to go into the show, explore around, take a look at the Rentec AMG GTR parts that they have now made. I'm looking forward to seeing those and thinking about whether I should maybe upgrade. And then we'll take a look around basically what's going on here on a beautifully sunny day in the south of France. I'm looking forward to it, should be an awesome time. Let's head in, take a look around the show. It is now the 15th year of Top Marks Monaco. It's my eighth consecutive year, but there is a lot to see here. The weird, wacky, and wonderful. So we'll take a little walk around, starting right here with a couple of cars in front of me, including a full carbon Donkervort D8 GTO RS. Now, last year, I drove a Donkervort here at Top Marks for the first time. Fantastic experience. Then there's a 911 ST, Bugatti Veyron Grand Sport at the end, but let's head into the main hall. We'll go and have a look at all of the different creations in turn, but I want to beeline straight to the Rentec package for the AMG GTR. So you'll know that my GTR has had a very minor upgrade in the sense of the downpipes, ECU tune, and blow off valve. But this car is wearing a prototype for their aero package along with a stage three kit up to 825 horsepower. So new turbos, new transmission upgrades, suspension wheels. And as we go around the car, the bits I'm interested in are the aero package parts. For example, the canards at the front, you can see the extended side skirts as well. Around the back, the double layer wing, I particularly like that wing. It's got more aggressive end plates and the second layer around the back of it and also the add-ons to the diffuser too. But one other thing while we're here, the tires that this car is wearing, these are quite interesting. Michelin Sport Cup 2 ZP tires. These are the tires that the car used when it did its Nürburgring lap. They're wider than the regular, wider than the regular Sport Cup 2s. You can only get them from AMG in a falter back and they're basically, if you come and look at the tread, maybe I should just turn on the light to show you this. They are basically semi-slicks. They're road legal in some countries, not every country. The UK and Germany, I think, are included, but many are not. Anyway, let me know what you think about these package upgrade parts. Very, very curious. I think it looks really nice. And whether you think I should do more to the engine. Does the V8 need even more? They've also got a, uh, an old SL Pagoda at the back that has been upgraded to have a supercharged V8, which is just cool. It's basically new, except for that. Then we have a Lada Neva, old school 4x4 fun. There's always a Lada here. Continue exploring the top car stand, Stinger 911. Zenvo are here with the bright green beast. Their newer model is actually down in the pit lane. We'll go see that later on. Twisted Defender, we've seen the guys from Twisted a few times before. If we continue through to go exploring, lots of the weird and wonderful. Over to Klassen, we have an SLR. Not such a standard SLR though, Klassen SLR 750. Completely redone interior. That is strong. That is a very, very bright and bold interior. Red carbon, mix of red and white leather. That is wild. The body kit is crazy. Triple side exit exhaust rather than the standard. Around to the front. Goodness me, presumably 750 horsepower as well. Absolutely nuts. And just over here, Top Car also showing some renders for a Eurus package to come in future. Must be one of the first to be doing any work with the Eurus. What else do we have as we explore? We have the Monza Garage Ligier. That looks like a very quick race car. Poggia. This 488, 488 GTB, is even faster than a Pista. Just come and have a look at the design here. I love this, actually, what they've done at the back, how open that is. Proper race car to do that. New carbon fiber parts, the rear wing. Come around towards the front as well, just to have a good look at this. Carbon parts in the center of that, too. And they've also got a 4C, the Alpha 4C, and there's another one outside. I'll take a look at the one outside in a bit more detail. That is a crazy smart. Keep coming round. Ooh, Viper Green GT3 RS, very nice. Corvette, Krapovich exhaust systems, no doubt sounds incredible. M2 system, ah, we saw the installation of the M2 system on my manager Mark's M2 back at the time. So we have here some lovely random things. Spiker Laviolette LM85. The very pretty Aston Martin DB11 Volante with a couple of Vantages right behind it. And then we move to the Corvette-based Equus. I like the rally lights that that's wearing. Front spin around, we've got some Lotuses, a very nice red Honda NSX, Kia Stinger, 280 SL, all sorts of shops and merchandise around the outside as well. The Shelby cars, Cobras, GT40, Tesla, 
So Shek are back with the TS900 Apex. This has 1,400 horsepower, a hybrid setup, an Audi source 4.2 litre V8 making about half of that, and a battery system setting up the rest. Proper performance, not to 100 Ks in two and a half seconds. And a top speed of 390 kilometers an hour. Very raw, very crazy. Just look at those seats, harnessed in as well when you drive. Absolutely crazy thing. Nice to see the guys back here again. Brabus and StarTech now with the DB11 as well. Keep coming through. We've got the Alandi Performance cars. This is a Camaro on the most ridiculous of steroids you have ever seen. I'm actually just taking all of this in. That is crazy, that thing. Um, we have Mustang behind that, and then the Corvette here, the Super Vet, I should say, with that wing attached to the back. It literally, race car style, is attached and over the top of the standard wing that the car already wears. Clearly, wide body kit, sitting very wide and crazy as well. Then, if we come through to three more cars that we have here, the first up is the Corbellati. Now, these guys are aiming to break a world record speed of 500 kilometers an hour, so a prototype of the car here. Be interesting to see what they manage to do with that. Then we have the Eden Green, which we saw before at the Geneva Motor Show, but just to walk around the back of it quickly, the paint scheme is awesome. It's a mix of, well, old school styling really, isn't it? Just craziness with the flip paint. But you can see the colors changing as we walk around. And then just through here, if we come to the final car, we have the Arash AF10. Been updated a little bit, Arash working on the AF8 as well still, um, but we've seen a bit of this before. Nice to, to see it as always. Awesome project built in the UK. So there we go, quick whistle stop tour around the inside. Let's head on out to the pit lane paddocks and see what is out there. Down in the test drive paddock then, we have a Lexus LC500H, Lotus Exige, GTR, and at the end is the Zenvo TSRS. We saw this car launched at the Geneva Motor Show. And the most unique thing about it is the way that this rear wing actually works. They have made this completely movable. It tilts when you turn so that it puts the outside of the wing up into the air higher to give the car more downforce. And obviously there's a casual 430 Spider just driving past on the other side of the road. But this is their latest product. It's here. Potentially there might be an opportunity to do something with it. So watch this space over the coming days. There are a couple of other cars around the background here for test drives and then there is one other pit we will head to where we started off earlier where the GT3 is parked and then I'm going to explain what's going on with the GTR. This is literally the car that I wanted to talk about, the Pagia 4C. It's sat in purple. Nice exhaust system on that, the carbon fibre parts, the rear wing around the back as well. 4C is a fun little thing, very quirky, unusual car. Tiny little engine but sports car experience. The old school Shelby GT350, that looks really cool actually. Then we have a 65 Mustang convertible, Tesla Model S, obviously my GT3, StarTech Evoque, a couple of other bits and pieces and some pretty crazy wraps actually here from Elite Wrap on the M3 and the M6. So we are now gonna jump into the GT3 and head to the Mercedes. Up we go, loads of people here today, unsurprisingly taking pictures and the like of cars that are driving around. It is super, super busy, but this is the Fairmont Hairpin, of course, famous part of the Formula One track. Stealthy Performante. So many nice cars, even just following a Maserati here. So we are going into the garage to find the GTR. Here it is, feeling a little bit abandoned in the basement of a garage, but let's jump out and I can explain why this is. What has happened here then? Well, on the face of it, the car looks completely fine. But if we come in close, you will see at the lower corners of the bumper on either side, there are these openings for cooling. Inside those, you have the intercoolers, but unusually, there is no mesh or protection from stones and road debris flying up and hitting the component right behind. So what has effectively happened is a stone has pierced this intercooler, which is responsible for cooling the gearbox. There has been a slight leak, even a little bit more coming out. And effectively, that means that with the temperatures here, there is a risk of the gearbox overheating. And as such, we're basically not driving the car until that can be fixed and replaced. It seems a little design oversight that it's not protected. Hopefully they'll look after me when we take it in. But I'm gonna jump in the car now to drive it over to Mercedes to get them to have a look at it and see 
see what we can do. And hopefully, while it's there, we can also get this windscreen finally sorted out, which has that delightful crack up it. But we need to get this car back up and running for more adventures to come. To be honest, a thanks has to go to the Mercedes International Service Center. They did a great job of getting the car booked in straight away to Mercedes-Benz in Monaco, SAMGF. They're gonna be looking after the car and hopefully the next time I see it, we are no longer going to have this little leak. I think it should be a relatively simple fix. And of course, also the windscreen. For now, we will hop back into the GT3, head back into Monaco, and I will see the GTR again very soon. There are lots of car spotters here. Guess why? There is a McLaren P1 and there's an Aventador. That's just there. Um, we're heading up to Casino Square and behind the people there we have a P1. Very nice. That we like. Now we come to Casino Square which is obviously very, very busy and there is the Apollo IE. So that is the car that we filmed the Cars and Coffee Brescia, the purple carbon with the gold wheels as part of a Top Marks display up here at the casino. But that thing is just absolutely crazy. A couple of other nice cars around as well. 488, <laughs> GMKs, uh, 4x4 squared, a 16M tucked in over there. What a lovely day in Monte Carlo. Yeah. There goes a Herman Aventador. So we're now at the Yacht Club for something a little bit different. I have come here to take a look at the Dynamic GTT 115. Now this is a one of seven yacht that is designed by Studio F Porsche. So basically the company owned by the Porsche Group who design everything other than the Porsche cars. However, this yacht, 35 meter yacht, actually has quite a number of similarities with different models of 911s and other Porsches. Almost you can see some of that in the styling of the rear end. But my particular favorite bits right now, if you look up towards the top, at the side, you actually have a very similar panel just there as per the Targa. Up at the very top, you have the rear wing end plates of the 911 GT3. We're going to head inside and see some more aspects of this. But basically, GTT, it's a Grand Tourer, Grand Tourer Transatlantic. It can travel over 3,000 miles. There's a carbon fiber bridge to walk onto the yacht. And we shall go and take a look straight up to the sun deck. But I want to show you something very specific. And it wasn't going to be the fact that the bar is almost like the rear wing of a car. But come and have a look at the material that is used for the sun lounges. You probably recognize this. This is houndstooth, like you found in traditional 911s and again in the more recent 911R. That is here around the jacuzzi at the front and also on the lower sun deck down there at the very front. This is really quite fun actually. Uh, to go exploring and see these Porsche touches carried through into, well, <laughs> such a comfortable place. Coming back down towards the main deck, let's head inside and just have a quick explore of what we have here. And one of my favourite things is that the roof is high and finished in Alcantara, just like the sports cars, the lightweight materials. You see a lot of that around here. There is a marble 911 on display right there. That's very, very nice. But let's come through just here towards the driver's zone. Very different from a car, except we also have a Recaro folding bucket seat, quite literally just like in the cars, with the houndstooth finishing inside it as well. Very, very nice. So this is actually a hybrid. There are a total of two diesel engines, as well as the hybrid system. It has 3,200 horsepower and barely consumes anything. From what I've understood, it actually can glide along transatlantic, barely using anything. So down below, of course, are all the crew rooms and the like. Maybe we'll head down and have a quick explore. But that, that's cool, I like that. Coming down just to have a look at the cabins here. Three cabins, the two spare cabins, so to speak, identical matching. But my favorite thing has to be this, the carbon fiber door sill, just like in my Rode GT3 with a custom sill there. And if we come and have a look at the master suite, this is more luxurious than my bedroom at home. More 911 features you might notice, like the louvres on the GT3 RS, the rear section from different models, and the leather as well, by the way, all of the leathers, just the same leather that is used in the road cars. So you've got the dressing room on that side and a very, very smart bathroom on this side. This is stunning, so cool. What a place. Back on the harbour side, feast your eyes over this in all of its glory. And I haven't actually said yet, by the way, the silver colour it's painted in is Porsche's Rhodium Silver, the road car colour. You could have the yacht 
painted to match your Porsche, your 911. And it also says hybrid on the side there, just like a 918 Spider or a Panamera Turbo SE hybrid. But that is the kind of thing that dreams are made of. What a stunning yacht. There is a 918 Spider going up the hill over there, and then the 4x4 squared as well. You can tell everybody has gone after the 918. Meanwhile, that camo rolls past. There is a Stinger as well. Purple wheels on the Purple Mante, that is strong. White wheels on the other Hurricane, and there's an SV as well. This is a non-stop Lapo parade. That is a Liberty Walk wide body kit on a 458 Italia. Purple Mante seem to be one of the cars of the year here at the Top Marks. Green seems to be the colour of the year as well. F12 TDF, satin grey. Very, very nice. That's quite nice. PTS GT3. GTS. see that unfortunately but it was there yellow 720s is nice followed by another aventador the light is quickly going down but like i said there is one more thing to take a look at the gt3 while i was away went to visit sparco in turin to have some new custom racing harnesses installed so i had it from new with just the driver's seat that was part of the club sport package but not the seat belt for the passenger well now we have both and not only that, but they are custom seat belts. You can actually catch a glimpse of them through the windows, but finished in black with the green stitching to match the car. How cool is that? Properly set and ready now to go out to be driven as the car was intended. So those have been fitted by Sparco. They're custom created to match with this car. You can create your own belts as well. And also we've negotiated with Sparco a 15% Shmi 150 discount code on belts or anything else from their store. So head along using the link down below if you're interested in that. But let me just come round to the other side. I'm gonna jump in here uh, while we're at it with the new belts installed, click myself in. But it basically just puts, you know, even more icing on the cake of the custom Shmi 150 car. So it's always kind of funny to do this, I think. Let me just spin my camera around. I won't be able to get it completely clicked in while I'm holding a camera. But these are just perfect for this car. Anyway, I'm actually going to leave today's video there. It's been a pretty, actually overloaded with all sorts of things kind of video from going around top marks looking at the Rentec GTR so let me know below if you think I should be looking at any of those parts then of course taking my car in fingers crossed is going to come back all well and healthy very very soon and then just generally seeing the chaos that goes on around Monaco during top marks and finally it's a big thanks to Sparco for these amazing belts they are absolutely epic so I'll wrap it up there thank you very much as always for watching guys I appreciate your support and I will see you again very very soon cheers <laughs>